In a previous video, I covered the ready-made RC recruit. I installed Pix Falcon several months ago and have been flying both in a stabilized mode as well as uh, autonomous mode. Now, one thing that I said that I wanted to do was uh, go beyond this 900 megahertz link and use uh, Pi Zero and going longer range uh, over cellular network using this WaveShare hat. This has the uh, Simcom 800C module on it. And in the initial video, I said I wanted to stream Mavlink uh, over the cellular network, and that's still the case, but I think we're gonna take baby steps here. And the first step that I'm going to demonstrate in this video is how we uh, set up our Pi to communicate using AT commands with this module. And then I'll install drone kit on Pi Zero. Uh, we'll just do a simple test where we get GPS from PixFalcon and sent via SMS to my phone. Now that's not the most scalable solution, but there are a lot of steps uh, to get this up and running. So I wanted to document that, and then I'll be continuing to work towards uh, being able to stream Mavlink over the network, hopefully to uh, ground station running Q ground control. Now, I apologize, there was a user that posted a comment and I can no longer find it about a project called Arpanion. And, I uh, appreciate that comment. I will certainly look into that in the future. At the end of the day, I might run into some hurdles that make it impossible to uh, work with this Pi Zero streaming Mavlink, but I figured it's worth documenting and sharing uh, what I learn as I go. So let's go ahead and dive into uh, the configuration. We'll go ahead and start from scratch. I've mounted the SD card and we're going to uh, choose a new OS to overwrite onto that. I'll choose Raspberry Pi OS since this is Pi Zero. Let me choose the uh, light version with no desktop environment. That just keeps things nice and simple. And then we'll select the 16 gigabyte SD card. We'll go ahead and accept to overwrite. I'll enter my password. We'll let that write. Probably takes anywhere from five to 10 minutes. The Raspberry Pi Lite version has been written to the SD card. Now, normally when that is complete, your SD card will be ejected. So I've unplugged, plugged back in on my Mac, and we'll see the uh, boot drive here. And what we want to do, if you're not familiar with uh, networking in Raspberry Pi, sometimes you'll need the KVM, your keyboard, video, a mouse working, and I'm going to do this in a headless mode and I'll put a link to this get book below the video. It covers a lot of these steps, but there are two things we want to do. We want to uh, add an empty SSH file to the root directory and then a uh, WPA supplicant configuration files. What I can do on my Mac and this can obviously be done on Windows as well. I'll create an empty SSH file and then at the same time, I'm going to create this configuration file. You'll need to update with your SSID and your password. I'll go ahead and do that. So I'll go ahead and enter my username and password offline. And once that's done, you'll be able to eject your SD card, place it in your Pi Zero, boot up, and it will connect to your network. I've switched over to my PC, my Mac is acting strange, but same thing still applies here. Uh, the steps are identical, we're just using a different tool. What we'll do now is after we've configured our Pi in headless mode by putting the SSH file and the network configuration file in the root, we put the SD card into Pi, we boot it up. If all is done correctly, it should show up on our network and You'll need to go to your router admin to figure out Pi's IP address. I've gone ahead and done that. Now on PC, you could use a tool called PuTTY. I generally prefer the developer command prompt if you have uh, Visual Studio tools installed. So let me start by pinging Pi Zero. I know that it's at this IP address. I'll go ahead and SSH into it. and we'll use the default username and password of Pi and Raspberry. The first thing that we wanna do before we continue with this configuration is we'll do an update and an upgrade. I'll just go ahead for simplicity's sake and copy this command. 
go ahead and run it so it'll update and upgrade to the latest packages. After the package upgrade is complete, we'll need to configure Raspberry Pi Zero so that we can have serial communication with the GSM hat. This is done with the Raspi config option. So I'll do a sudo Raspi dash config. The first thing that we'll do is we'll go down to interfacing options. We'll select our serial port. We want to disable the login shell access for serial, but we would like the serial hardware port to be enabled. We'll select OK. And then let's go ahead and exit. I'll go ahead and shut down so that we can plug in our GSM hat and boot back up and test communication. In front of me, I have the GSM hat, my Pi Zero, and this developer SIM card that I got from Hologram IoT. I'll show that interface here in a minute. Now, I'm not going to go through the provisioning. The steps are pretty straightforward, but this SIM has been provisioned. And what I'll do is just go ahead and put it in the GSM hat. And then we'll just attach the hat with this 40 pin header. It just plugs right in. It does come with standoffs. So on one side, some point I'll put those standoffs in there, but we'll go ahead and power it back up and test the serial communication as well as see if we can determine if it's on the hologram network. I've SSH back into Pi Zero. The GSM hat is installed. Before we can communicate with the GSM hat, we need to install a terminal emulation program. Now, you might be familiar with Minicom. More recently, I've been using a program called PicoCom, and I just find it simpler to use. So I'm going to issue the sudo apt install PicoCom command. This won't take very long, and then we'll be able to uh, communicate with the hat and send AT commands. PicoCom is installed. Now let's go ahead and see if we can communicate with the GSM hat. Now, when it's plugged in, it generally on Pi Zero, it will be located at dev serial zeros. I'll issue PicoCom, we'll give it a baud rate. We want to use 9600 and then I'll do dev serial zero. So we're in our terminal. Let's just type AT to see if we can get a response. That's great, I'll do it again just to confirm. And one tip is that if you want to exit out of PicoCom, you'll do a control A, a control X, and then you're out. So let's just go back in one more time, do another test, AT. I issued the wrong command there, I'll do AT again. We see the OK, control A, control X, we're out. So we have communication, the next step, will be to use AT commands to bring the module up on the hologram network. Before we run this network test, let me mention that there is a wiki page for the SIM 800C GSM hat. There are a bunch of different AT commands and what I've tried to do in the Git book is really just focus on uh, the commands necessary to get on the network and send a SMS message. Now. Further on in this video, I'm going to actually share some scripts that have all of this embedded in the script and you won't have to worry about memorizing these commands. So let's go to our terminal. We're going to, let me just clear the screen and I'm going to go back into PicoCom. The first thing I'll do is we'll attach to GPRS. So I'll do AT plus CG ATT equals one. It's always good when we see a response of OK, so that looks good. Let's set the APN, which in our case will be hologram, so APT plus CSTT hologram. That looks good. Now we want to establish the wireless connection, AT plus CIICR. That will take. A uh, second, you'll notice a bit of a delay, and we'll issue the ATCIFSR. It responds with our IP address on the network, so that looks good. 
we'll go ahead and try to send a text message. You may be wondering why we're using these AT commands. This is how we need to interface with the module from Python. So within our Python scripts, we'll be issuing these commands and then uh, changing some of the values. We've seen our local IP address now on the network. The next thing we'll do is set the module to SMS mode. So that's the CMGF equal to one. We want to uh, wait for that OK, and then we'll begin the text message. The serial interface is pretty finicky, so for example, if I mess up, I can't go back. What I would normally recommend is just hit Enter. It'll give you an error, and then you can do it again. So CMGS equals, I'll use my phone number. I'll just go ahead and blur this out. I am using uh, the plus one, and then the area code, and then my number. That will send us into uh, interface where we can enter the text message. So I'll just do hello, I'll hit enter, and then world on a new line. Now to actually end the message or terminate the message and send it, I'll on my keyboard use control Z, and then I'll hit enter. That will take a couple of seconds. We should see an okay response. Yep, it tells us okay. And I see the message on my phone. Let's get out of the serial interface with a control A, control X. We're back at the command prompt. And now that we're on the network, we can move on to installing Python and DroneKit, where we'll communicate with PixFalcon, get a GPS coordinate, and send it via SMS. There's a good chance that when you install the Raspberry Pi OS, you're going to have Python installed by default. So I'm going to do a Python version. I have 2.7.16, which is sufficient to run DroneKit. But before we do, let's install pip, and we'll also install the Python dev tool. So I'll do a sudo apt, install Python pip, and Python dev. Our Python packages are installed. And let me just take a moment to reiterate how amazing it is to have a $5 Linux computer where we can install Python. I'll go ahead and just test that we have pip installed. So I'll do a pip dash dash version. We can see this is pip 18.1. And now I'll go ahead and do a sudo pip install drone kit. Unfortunately, I ran into an error with this installation and I'd done this before and I forgot to mention this. Uh, there is a known issue. It's in GitHub related to some additional dependencies to get DroneKit installed. So when you're going through this, make sure to uh, just copy this line. I have all of these dependencies here, the additional libxml and then the libxslt. So I'm going to grab those real quick. I'm going to put them in and install them and then we'll be ready to go. Let's try this again. I'll do a sudo pip install drone kit. Okay, great. We have drone kit installed. Let me clear the screen. In the git book, I have a basic Python script that will do what we did earlier, where we communicate with the WaveShare GSM hat over serial. We issue the AT commands. We'll make sure to change this to your phone number or the recipient phone number and a little message that says hello from Pi Zero. And just a note here, this character represents the control Z and then the carriage return or the enter key, similar to what we did where we enter an AT command and press the enter key. Now, before running this script, there's a good chance that you do not have the Pi Serial module installed. So I'm going to go ahead and do a pip install of that. And then finally, we'll be able to run the script. Pi Serial will take no more than a few seconds to install. We'll grab this script. And to keep things simple, I'll go ahead and create this in my home directory of the Pi user. I'll make sure to change this phone number and then we'll run the script. After updating the phone number, let's go ahead and give this a run. We'll run Python at.py. We should see communication and a response back from Pi, and now I see the hello from Pi Zero on my phone. Let me talk through what we have going on from a wiring perspective. Now, I'm still trying to sort through all of this. I'm going to get this all tidied up, but in the meantime, I want to share the current wiring configuration. The first priority is telemetry. I don't want to lose this link just yet. 
Therefore, in the meantime, I'm going to be getting Mavlink coming out of this USB port from the Pix Falcon. So you'll notice that I have this USB cable. Once again, I'll probably make this shorter and tidy it up, but this is going to go to our Pi Zero. Now, the challenge is Pi Zero doesn't have a standard USB built into it. It has just our micro USB, so I have this converter. For bench testing, this has worked well, so I'm going to go ahead and connect that. And the other issue is we'll need to get power to Pi Zero, so I'll be working on that behind the scenes, but for now, I'm just going to use my USB power bank for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and power this up. And what it'll do is it will power up both Pi Zero, our Pix Falcon, and peripherals. I know there's a lot going on here. I'll need to get this all sorted out. And with such a small form factor, it's going to make this much easier to mount onto or in this recruit than it would a standard Raspberry Pi. With that being said, we'll go ahead and shell into this and run some drone kit commands. With everything powered up on the bench, Raspberry Pi should be back on the network. We'll go ahead and SSH into it. I'm logged into Pi. The first thing that we'll do is just take a quick look at the dev folder. We should see TTY ACM0. This is where Pix Falcon is located. And what I'll do is go ahead and grab this first drone kit script. We previously installed drone kit with PIP. It's a simple script and what it's going to do is make a connection over this port and loop continuously to print both the vehicle location as well as attitude. So for simplicity's sake, I'll just go ahead and copy that. I'll go ahead and put this Python script in the Pi home directory and I'll paste it in. We'll save it and let's go ahead and run it. I want to see if I can get information from Pix Falcon to Pi using DroneKit. This will abstract us away from the Mavlink protocol and allow us to make basic function calls to get information. So we'll see that, notice here that we have the autopilot firmware version, that's PX4 plane, which is what I have installed. Now we don't have GPS because I'm sitting on the bench, I can't currently get it, but you'll notice the attitude. I'll go over here and I'll just pitch forward a good bit. You'll notice that the pitch is updating. I'll roll to the right. We can see the roll. So we're able to get this information using drone kit on Raspberry Pi. I'll control C. We'll go ahead and cancel that. Now back to the Git book, you'll notice that there is a script below that essentially combines what we've done previously. It combines the AT commands to communicate with the GSM hat as well as sends the GPS location via text message. I'm not going to dive into that. I know this video has run long already, but if you look at this, I'll just give a quick overview. So we're going to loop and send the vehicle location using this function. And you'll notice here, you'll want to make sure to uh, update that to your phone number. And then we just use a simple uh, Google Maps link. I append both the latitude and longitude. You'll receive that text with a link. On iOS, it just comes through as a link that you can tap and then it launches the Google Maps app. And let me wrap up this video with a few final thoughts. Please be sure to check out the Git book if you're interested in this. I'll be updating it with recent information. I'm trying to currently work on streaming Mavlink to Q Ground Control using UDP. Now, one thing that I am concerned about with this GSM hat. It is designed for IoT stuff, Internet of Things type applications, and it might just be that we can only communicate with AT commands, that we can't truly use it as we would a GSM modem. I'm making a note of that. I'm going to continue to test, but it might require an upgrade or a different type of module to be able to treat this as though we were on a network using Ethernet or a wireless LAN. But I appreciate you guys following along. I know we covered a lot of information. If you have any questions or comments or even suggestions, please leave them below and I'll continue to update as I find out more. Thanks for watching.